Okay, so today we're going to talk about balsa grant baits. You know, a lot of people use them different times of the year. My favorite time to use balsa crankbaits is during hard to catch temperatures, either late of the summer or colder water. That's my favorite time to use balsa crankbaits. We're going to talk about them for just a little bit. Uh, most of the ones I have are Rapala, just because they're easier, a little bit more priced. I do have some that are a little bit more, but most of the ones I have are Rapala crankbaits, even some shad wraps and stuff. So let's talk about them. All right, God bless y'all. Um, this is one of the other little sections. Uh, this is a section we're going to talk a little bit about balsa crankbaits. Um, so I've heard for years about balsa crankbaits. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, I threw a jig and spinner baits years ago more than anything when I first started truly bass fishing. When I really was, when I was a kid, we got every now and then we got a chance to go do different things. Um, but as I got older and started working, earning my own money, um, that's really when I started bass fishing. My dad would take me a lot. We would go John boat and stuff together. We would go fish for whatever he wanted to fish. A lot of times we went cat fishing. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, we went fishing. We had two baits most of the time, but you had most days when I was growing up, you had a rappella and you had a little purple worm with a little fire tail. We did fine with those. Most of the time we set it up in a little split shot rig and you did, we both had Zebco 33s and that's what we used. We was happy with that. Um, so when I was a kid, other than to repel a little minnow, most balsa baits, you just didn't put a lot of effort into them. Most of them didn't run right. Uh, most of them, when you went through them and you reeled them back to you, they'd go to one side, they just didn't look right. Or if they did, they were too expensive for you to hold. So I didn't put a lot of time into them. I just, I just didn't. Didn't have a whole lot of confidence in them. I used mostly plastic type of crankbaits when I did throw a crankbait. Um, but here in the last few years, um, I've broke down and I finally, because I've been able to fish the winter time a little more, um, and I got older to where jerk bait wore my arm out, because the jerk bait's pretty popular in the winter time. Um, be honest with you, I wasn't been very successful with a jig. I was going out and spending a whole day fishing in the winter time and maybe catching a fish or two on a jig and that was it. Um, cold days with gloves on and everything else, it's not exactly a fun time a lot of days, okay? Uh, did it for years on Cumberland, just dragging a low jig. Even at night time, 35, 38 degrees at night, dragging a low jig. A lot of times it was, it was neat because you got to go to Cumberland, but it, but it wasn't a fun day, <laughs> okay? It wasn't a fun night. So when I started getting my own boat last year, I pretty much made a challenge to myself because I had heard theories for a long time. And if you've watched a lot of my videos long enough, you know that I, I don't go by what everybody else says. It piques my interest what everybody else says. It causes me to challenge what other people say. But what I'm telling you, I have physically done myself. A lot of it you will physically see on videos that I've loaded up. So hopefully this helps you to be able to sit around and learn beforehand a little bit, different things that I've been blessed to do. Hopefully to help you have a little more confidence to maybe try some of the things you need to do. Okay, so in the other little video, we talked about line size. Same thing applies to this little section right here. Um, I use, and I'm, I'll put the same little thing I've learned. Uh, I'll show you the same little clip that I used in the last one. Right, so one of the things I want to show you about the fishing line. This is regular monofilament, 12 pound test. See it right there. This right here is what you need to look for. This is the most important thing. See that right there, that 0 0.014 average diameter? That's more important than the pound test, believe it or not. Um, the pound test is supposed to be the breaking strength. Here's the thing about trialing big game. 
uh, trialing big game, the actual breaking strength is more than the 12 pound test, but it's because it's a thicker line. Okay, so this line is what I use more than anything to crank with for years before I even understood the diameter of line because I used to use 10 pound test big game just because it was inexpensive, easy to get to. Um, and kind of before fluorocarbon was a big thing, it was pretty common for everybody to throw monofilament. Well, what I realized is that that's the line that the 10 pound test just snapped too easy. This one would break also, but it was a little, little harder for the fish to break, especially after I learned and spent time learning how to set my drag and everything else. But when I started using fluorocarbon line, I automatically went to 12 pound test and around those rocks and stuff, sometimes they would eat me up a lot. Well, I happened to be out there one day and I didn't have a choice because the reel that I was using that 12 pound line on kind of backlashed and messed up on me. So the only other one I had, I already had a jig tied on and it was 15 pound test. So the 15 pound test is what I started throwing. And I realized that, man, I'm, I'm still catching fish on these crankbaits and I'm doing great. I mean, they're hitting it just as good as they was on that 12. And I was like, that's pretty amazing that I've, cause this is thicker line. Well, what I realized was is that that diameter, there's 15 pound test, diameter is 0.013. So it's not much to our eyes, but honestly, 15 pounds test cigar is thinner than that line right there is. So this is why this line right here is what I've started to use on just about everything. I use on spinner, on spinner bait, I use a 20 just because, I mean, I have for years. Um, 15 pound is what I use on my finesse jigs. 15 pound is what I use on my dirt baits. And 15 pound is what I used on most of my crankbaits. So I just wanted to show you that comparison between the two. Line size I used to use on, on my crankbaits that I finally determined years ago was my favorite. The one I used the most um, was 12 pound monofilament, big game. Very inexpensive, just buy at the store. Um, it held up good. Uh, I learned that in the winter time, it was a real good line to use because it's a little softer. Um, that used to be a big problem with a lot of crankbaits. They were so light and everything else, throwing them that uh, it's very hard to throw them with anything else other than light line uh, in the right rod setup. So what I learned one day after having a backlash with that one reel that I had set up that way, that 15 pound cigar is actually thinner than that line. Not by much, but just a little bit. So now pretty much just to pretty much save money, I buy one spool of that 15 pound, about a thousand yards full, and I spill up my reels, and that's pretty much what I use on everything except my my uh, spinning rods, which I use eight pound test cigar, and one bait caster that I put 20 pound test, which is what I use my spinner baits. Um, if I ever backlash that one, then I guess I'll have to use 15 because that'd be the only one I put 20 on. But nevertheless, let's talk a little bit about balsa crank baits. So balsa crankbaits have been around for a long time. Uh, they were probably some of the, the original crankbaits, you know, the Big O and several others that people used for years. Um, that's actually how you wind up with a lot of the plastic baits like the Riklun and all those that got famous because they wanted to design a plastic crankbait that lasted just as long or caught fish as much as the balsa ones did. Because if you did find a good balsa one, they did pretty good because of the way they react to bouncing around and different things. Um, first one that I put my experience to, that I heard a lot about, um, no surprise, I'm sure to many, is the DT6. DT6, I made myself a challenge last year for winter. That the only crankbait I was gonna use all winter was gonna be a balsa crankbait. And at the time, I had several different colors of the DT6, so I said, there you go, it's perfect. I haven't thrown them much this year. I'm gonna throw them in the winter time. So I stayed away from a lot of even my flat bait, plastic ones, I throw the balsa one. Highly impressed with the quality of fish, not only I caught, but also when I had a friend
go with me uh, to go fishing and I suggested to throw that DT6 because he wanted to learn how to use different baits. He also wound up catching almost five pounder on that balsa DT6, same thing, uh, same size line. I was using that um, 12 pound monofilament at the time and caught plenty of fish on that DT6. The amazing thing to me is that with balsa, you can have the same different things as you do plastic. This one here has about a medium vibration to it. Um, another one that made it an interesting challenge to me was the OG Tiny. It's a little bit lighter, it's about 5 16. Sometimes they can be a little bit harder to throw in the wind. Um, but this little bait right here, I caught a lot of fish as well. Uh, the thing that I learned about wintertime fishing and crankbaits, so, though, is that a lot of people, what they want to do is they want to put smaller diameter line to get the bait deeper. And you say, well, why do people do that? The reason they do that is because fish aren't going to travel, and you don't hear this very much on very many videos, fish aren't going to travel as far to react to a crankbait in the winter as they do a summer. Summertime, those smallmouth, they'll come 15 feet to hit a crankbait if they think that they can nail it and eat it. In the winter, that's probably not going to happen as much, okay? In the winter, you're going to bounce it over a log and that fish is under that log and he may come up and inhale it. This little bait right here, where I was most successful with it, was the same thing, staying up in that shallower, it goes four feet, so anything five foot or less, this little bait excels quite a bit. Um, this has a super tight action to it. If you don't have the right setup, you will probably won't feel it vibrate. Um, it takes very sensitive rod and you have to take your time. That's the one suggestion that I make to people is a lot of times you need to take each one of these balsa baits. Now I got two different brands here this is the two that I use the most. This is a Rapella, and this is a Black Label. That's the two that I've used the most. This one here is a little small Hickster. Uh, it goes about five foot deep. This one here goes about four foot deep. You would think, well, they're both flat side. They both have the same action. This little crankbait right here has almost the same vibration that a square bill would. The way that it's designed, it has a very wide, hard thumping little bait. You really want this bait here on a really windy day, or you want this bait right here on a not muddier water, but dirty water, because it's got a lot of vibration to it, okay? It's gonna draw strikes, okay? Uh, I haven't done so far very well with this after that water gets down to that below 50 degrees, I haven't done very good with this crankbait. Um, but I have with this little OG Tiny because it has more of that subtle or tighter wiggle. I've had some very big fish on this little OG Tiny in the winter. I mean, I'm talking about down to 43 degree water. I've had some fish that were probably four plus pounds come off of this little crankbait. Um, and I have been throwing it with either the 12 pound monofilament or 15 pound cigar, which honestly is about the same diameter of line. Actually, the 15 pound cigar is a smaller diameter by just a fraction than the 12 pound monofilament. So I prefer the 15 pound cigar. Um, as a backup, of course, I do have the monofilament, but this little bait right here, it's amazing. Now you're gonna take this little crankbait right here and you're gonna take it to a lake that the water is 15 foot deep and you're gonna throw it all day long. You're gonna say, man, that guy I don't know what he's talking about because he took that crankbait and said he called these fish. I fished it all day long and the water was 43 degrees and I didn't catch a fish. Well, if you listen very carefully to what I said, the water was five foot deep. This whole stretch that I was fishing was about five foot deep. Those fish in the middle of winter on a nice rainy day were on that flat basically and staying that flat section which goes up from the boat so, so from the edge of that little flat all the way up to the bank is probably 30 to 40 feet. And then right beside that, there is a drop off 
that goes into 10 feet and 10 feet on that lake is probably one of the deepest stretchers there is so that day they were using that flat as their feeding area so when i throw this little bitty crankbait up in that up in that three to four foot of water and i'm holding my rod tip up and i'm barely reeling it this little bait is slowly moving through there and they were engulfing it they were hitting it with a little bit of force like i knew when they were on okay it wasn't i'm not telling you they were slamming me and taking the rod away from my hand but when a fish hit it i knew it they were hitting this little bait in 40 degree water caught a lot of fish on it had some come off i used to throw this bait and you'll see me anymore i used to throw a medium action crankbait a lot with crankbaits i stopped doing that a little bit i started going to a um and i've been blessed to have two of them now uh, I've started going with a legend glass, medium heavy, and it's a glass rod. So it's a crankbait rod, but it has a little bit more backbone to it. It still has a wonderful tip. It's still the whole rod pretty much bends and loads up, but you need it to dry the hooks and keep them because those fish, that colder water, their mouths are, it's just colder. So everything is tighter. Their muscles are tenser. Their, their jaw bones is tougher. Um, you need something to drive these little hooks into those fish in the wintertime. Um, if I would have gone down that same bank and throw this DT6, wouldn't have been very successful. Why? Because it would have been digging into that grass. This goes with that 15 pound line. This probably goes, says DT6, it probably goes five, five and a half feet. Okay, in digging, it would have been digging into that four foot section. So this wouldn't have been a good choice. Now I have thrown this in brush piles at Cumberland. I throw them around points at Cumberland at certain times of year. I throw them on some of those flats, banging around on those rocks, sometimes just coming through the middle of the water column. Um, and they've absolutely just nailed it because it doesn't always have to be banging on the bottom, but it needs to be in front of their face. That's probably what we need to spend more time doing fishing a crankbait than we realize. Even with these balsa baits, this action on this crankbait is is a lot more noticeable than this little bait here, okay? The problem is, is I can't get this crankbait as deep as I can get this one. Sure, I could change the pound line, I can do all that, but I'm telling you that by the time you change all that line, you're putting yourself at risk because this time of year in winter, I've caught a lot of big fish. I've caught a lot of fish that were over um, that three to four pound mark in the dead of winter um, just on crankbaits in places that people have gone out and throw jigs and everything else and not gotten bites because the same reason in the winter it does good as it does in the middle of summer or the fall or anywhere else it's been a reaction bite now I've been blessed to go on days that I've caught them and it raining on this little bait right here, which is an OG, this is a, an OG six, a slim six. Bait here is supposed to go about six foot deep. So on my 15 pound line, it probably goes five, five and a half feet. It has a wider presence, but it still has a very subtle action. Okay, as a crankbait. I've caught four plus on this crankbait right here. And I've caught several three pounders in one day on it. Guess what? On a little flat, same as I did that OG tiny. 40 degree water, muddy conditions, banging it off tree stumps, bringing it off of brush piles, things that I knew was, should be around there in the water. In the middle of the winter time, all of a sudden just loaded up. All of a sudden they're just there. You, if you have the right setup, you can feel them come up behind it and basically like they do a spinner bait you could almost feel them taking that water and sucking that water in and taking that bait same thing i mentioned in that other video i'm going to mention again in this one when i'm talking about crankbaits Probably the most important thing we need to do is to learn each crankbait that we have and use them as individual tools and learn how to use them and how to discern the times of use them. 
it's not necessarily that one crankbait's better than the other. All of them have different actions. All of them have different depths they reach. All of them have different times and subtleties. You know, I probably wouldn't throw this bait right here when I know I've got six foot visibility. Probably not the best idea. Now, if the water's chocolate milk or if the water's a little muddier and it's been that way for a while and it's about four or five feet deep and I know there's some brush piles around there, this is probably a good bait for me to throw and work through those and see if I get a bite. But if that water is crystal clear, I don't know that I would throw a crankbait. I'd probably try the tight line or something else, get away from the bank a little bit. But say that water has got a visibility of maybe a foot or two, then what I might do, especially in the winter, I might try this little bait right here. This is a little black label peanut. This is a little smaller profile. I may throw the OG Tiny. I may throw it with that silver side. You've seen me use it some. That silver side and that black back where it gives off that reflection. This one kind of does the same thing. It's pretty subtle. I caught some nice fish on this last winter. I did notice a difference throwing balsa baits in the wintertime versus throwing plastic baits in the wintertime. I'll just be honest with you. I stuck with them all winter and I was very successful. Probably one of the best winter fishing years I've had in a long time. Just by me switching to balsa crankbaits when I did throw a crankbait. Um, the only bait that I used that probably had bigger fish was that spinner bait. Um, but that spinner bait's a whole different story. But just staying within crankbaits, I was very successful by just using the balsa crankbaits during that 55 degree water down into the low 40s. Okay, and even sometimes right at 40 degrees. So when you figure water freezes at 32, we're pretty close to just freezing cold water. I mean, the fish had the red in their mouths. It was pretty cold outside. Even on rainy days, I was still successful with those balsa crankbaits. But the same thing, this little one right here has a little shallow bill. Same thing, I've hit stumps with it, ricocheted off, bam, caught a fish, okay? The T6, I've hit stuff, bam, caught a fish. But if there's a stump and it's up in two foot of water, this little bait right here is probably gonna come over that just right because it goes four foot deep. So when it dives, it's gonna come down, it's gonna bounce off of that. It's gonna give me a little resistance but I can kind of back off of the reel in a little bit and still make this bait work. DT6 is going to be a little bit harder because the DT6 is going to want to dive to six foot. So if I've got something in three foot, this is probably not the best one to use. My best bet is probably to use this bait right here. This is probably the better tool. That's why you see me talking a lot about, about crankbaits. It's not necessarily, and we get caught up in this so easily as fishermen, it's not that one bait's better than the other. It's they're all tools. And they're all good in certain situations. We as the fishermen have to determine, and that's honestly how we pass the test or don't. Let's be honest. Sometimes we figure it out by accident. Sometimes I go down the bank and throw this one. And guess what? They don't bite it. So I pick this one up and all of a sudden they bite it. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder why they bit it. A lot of people don't ask themselves that question. They're just happy they caught fish. I just happen to be the guy that I'm wondering, why in the world did they bite that crankbait? How'd I catch three on that and this day they didn't do it? Well, some days it's just because this one wasn't reaching them, and this one was. Some days it's because this one was banging too hard on the bottom and they didn't want that. They wanted something just slowly creeping across in front of their bait. That's what we really need to do as fishermen to determine. That is what makes you, honestly, that's honestly on days, that's what makes the difference about people catching fish. If you learn a lot of the guys that are really successful with crankbaits, they study a lot of stuff like that. They experiment a lot, but they know their crankbaits. They know what their different crankbaits do. Um, there's certain people that they won't throw certain colors unless a certain sky condition and everything else is that way. Some days I wonder if colors make as much difference as we think they do. You look at all the things in the water, they, they don't change color. Bluegill doesn't really, I mean, he gets black at certain times of year, but bluegill doesn't change color just because the sun comes up. Bluegill pretty much stays the same color all year long. There may be different types of color. Shad, they pretty much stay the same color all the time. The difference is a lot of times 
fish just ain't biting. They're not in the mood to eat. Um, but anyway, that's what keeps us going back and buying more. That's what keeps us adding up. But that, I thought maybe that would just be a little bit to help everybody just to talk about balsa crankbaits for a little bit, um, separate from hard plastic baits. Anyway, that's just, that's just my little piece of balsa crankbaits versus plastic crankbaits. I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Um, thank you all very much for everybody for sharing. Thank you very much for everybody who's sent me comments. Thank you everybody for that's, that's watched the videos. Hope they've been a blessing to you. I hope they get, catch more fish. Hope they trigger you to thinking, you know what, I'm going to experiment a little bit this winter. I've always sewed a jig. I'm going to start throwing a crankbait on and going down the lake just to see. Uh, if, if you're wondering if I'm what I'm talking about, go back through my videos. Watch a couple of them. Pick up some of these that you recognize, some of these baits, and watch them. Look for the temperature. Look for what time of day it was. Look how clear the sky was. Look how dark it was. Look at the fish that are caught. Some days it is just little fish. Some days it's pretty nice fish. Um, I could be you just as good as it was me. So hopefully it'll help you all. Uh, more than anything, I hope it points to Jesus because he's the one that's blessed me to be able to have the opportunity to do all this. I wouldn't have none of these things if he hadn't to give them to me and give me the understanding and be able to know what to do with them. Um, just a blessing, let's be honest. A lot of us have a lot of things going on in life. It's nice to just get out and just sometimes just see God's creation. And if we happen to catch a couple of fish, then that's just a blessing on top of it. Anyway, hope it's not very long videos. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Anybody has any questions about any of the baits at all, message me. I'll be happy to try to help you. Um, like I said, you don't have to have all these baits. You don't have to have a bunch of tackle boxes. We all do probably, but you don't have to have all this stuff. What you need to do is if you only have two crankbaits, learn those two crankbaits. You know, for years I had, uh, to be honest with you, you, you could probably get a DT6 and a DT10 and do most of the fishing you need to do. Get you a couple of basic colors, get you some muddy water colors, get you some clear shad colors. And there you go. Go fishing and have a good time. Um, some of you, you may fish in creeks and all you need is, all you need is that little OG tiny. So you know what, that's most of the water I fish, that's the deepest it goes. If that's what you do, then praise the Lord and have a good time. Some of you that want to learn a little bit more crankbaits, hope what the old man's talked about today has blessed you and helped you maybe learn a little bit, maybe challenge you to try nothing but balsa this year and just see what it does. Anyway, God bless you all. Like I said, thank you all very much for watching the videos. Um, don't forget, though, Jesus loves you. Y'all have a blessed day.